Thanks Pradeep Pindyala, Professor of Anesthesiology. Today I am going to discuss with you the common drugs which are usually kept in Viva and what you are supposed to know, the basics, <clears throat> absolutely basics about those drugs to pass the examinations of anesthesiology during Viva. The coming to the various drugs, you can't forget local anesthetics and I'm sure you know that they act by reversibly binding to fast sodium channels from within nerve fibers, thereby preventing sodium from entering the fibers, stabilizing the cell membrane and preventing action potential propagation. That's very simple. And what are the various types of local anesthetics? Initially, I'll talk very basics, then I'll go into the details of the various drugs which you are supposed to know during the Viva. The local anesthetics are either could be ester or amide based, isn't it? The esters are normally procaine, amethacaine, cocaine, benzocaine, tetracaine and the amides are lidocaine, prilocaine, bupivacaine, levo, bupivacaine, ropivacaine, mepivacaine etc. So you should know the very very basics and uh, uh, um, the inhaled anesthetic agents like you should be able to know the common desfluorine, anfluorine, halophthane, isofluorine, nitrous oxide, sevofluorine and occasionally they may ask about xenon also. Isn't it? So you should be able to know little bit of these drugs and they may ask the basics of how it works and intravenous agents will be definitely asked especially thiopentone, barbiturates and diazepam can be asked, medazolum can be asked, etomidate, ketamine and propofol. Propofol usually asked because you do use it every day and you should be knowing everything about it. And uh, you can be asked about the latest drugs, something about it, although they are not available in India, like remifentanil and those things. Fentanyl, you use it very frequently. They may ask about alfentanil and uh, sufentanil also, and buprenorphin and butorphanol. All these things are very usually asked. Pethidine, also known as meperidine, I'm sure you know, morphine and uh, muscle relaxant, they may ask, succinylcholine, definitely succinylcholine and various non-depolarizing like um, atracurium, cisatracurium, rocuronium, vecuronium, long-acting, you know, doxa, curium, pancuronium, all this. And why, uh, during my time, we used to you know, use a lot of pancuronium, now hardly is. And what are the adverse effects like? with succinylcholine, hyperkalemia, why it produce and what are the muscle aches, bradycardia and malignant hypothermia. <laughs> the discussion may go altogether in a different direction about the uh, potentially life-threatening malignant hypothermia and who are the substitute patients and how do you treat it, all those things. You should know non-depolarizing muscle relaxant which causes histamine release like atracarium and mivacarium and what they can cause like anaphylaxis and you should be able to ask, tell something about anesthesia awareness, you know, and, uh, and also there are certain reversal agents like flumazenil naloxone, naloxone reverses the effects of opioid flumazenil, flumazenil reverses the effects of benzodiazepines, I'm sure, <laughs> neostigmine you use it every day in sugar medics, the newer agent that definitely very effective against rocuronium and vicuronium. So coming to propofol, uh, you should be able to tell a little more than just the drug because, because you are using it almost every day, isn't it? 2,6-di-isopropylphenol, isn't it? The how the mechanism of action and they may ask the content, one person, solution, and what it has, like 10% soybean oil, 2.25% glycerol, egg lecithin it may have. And uh, um, yeah. so that is a mechanism of action, how it acts. It acts on the chloride channel of uh, beta subunits of GABA receptors, GABA. That causes transmembrane chloride conductance to increase, resulting in 
hyperpolarization of postsynaptic cell membrane and functional inhibition of postsynaptic neuron. That's how it works. You should be able to tell them. And uh, various pharmacodynamics, respiratory effects of uh, fall. Does it cause respiratory depression or not? And what are the central nervous system effects? Adverse effects like propofol infusions into... You should be able to answer that. And what are the indications? It can be used uh, for induction as well as maintenance of anesthesia. anesthesia. Short um, endoscopic procedures or in ICU patient continuous infusion per sedation. It can be used, isn't it? And wonderful drug for decay surgery and all. That is it. And it's a wonderful thing because it really causes vomitings. And what are the contrary indications like um, known hypersensitivity or airway obstruction? What is the dosage? Oh, those things like thiopentone, you should be able to know more about it. The old timers, when they come, they definitely ask about thiopentone. But the new timers really ask about thiopentone. They normally focus on Propofol. You may be asked about tomidate, what is it, like it's a imidazole derivative, water soluble and uh, mechanism of action, how it enhances inhibitory synaptic transmission by increasing the affinity of the inhibitory neurotransmitter, GABA for the receptors of activation of the chloride channel. You should be able to tell them, you should be able to say a uh, few words on pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics like cardiovascular effects. Uh, cerebral effects, respiratory effects, advantages, where the anesthetic induction, especially in the presence of unstable cardiovascular system, because it's the most stable drug. We use that. And what are the adverse effects of uh, etomidate? It's a painful injection. It can cause myoclonic movements, adrenocortical suppression. That is one thing you should be able to know. And ketamine, you use it almost every third day. Ketamine, you should be able to tell. It's a Chlorophenyl and cyclohexanol. Um, cyclohexanol. You should be able to talk about cyclohexanol derivative and cyclidine containing benzethonium chloride, isn't it? And it's a um, how it's the mechanism of action. And most of the drugs normally are, act on a GABA, but this inhibits NMDA receptors. Activation of glutamate and decreases its presynaptic release. Analgesic effects it acts on the thalamic and limbic system responsible for interpretation of painful signal and causes a direct inhibition of blood cytokines or sometimes decreases spinal cord sensitization by inhibition of the NMDA receptors located in the spinal cord dorsal horn. Should be able to talk about pharmacokinetics of this drug, ketamine and pharmacodynamics. Cardiovascular effects, how it acts, respiratory effects. It has minimal ventilatory dry and preserves upper airway reflexes. So, there could be increased risk of aspiration by using ketamine. Cerebral effects increases the cerebral blood flow, thus increases the intracranial pressure. So, what are the adverse effects? Like, there can be emergence delirium. That's horrifying. <laughs> Uh, feelings and uh, what you see emergence delirium and how can it be prevented by giving benzodiazepine isn't it what are the indications it can be given even intramuscular induction in children and all combination ketamine and propofol ketofol very famous ain't it contraindication and um, airway uh, obstruction etc uh, dosages you should be know what is the 1 to 2 milligram per kg body weight I am dosage, you should be you know. Like, newer propofol, like fast propofol, maybe us. Like, what is the problem? Like, it does not cause pain on injection, but perennial paresthesia and pain is re really a uh, thing. And delayed induction, that is the, another problem of uh, fast propofol. Although you have prevented the pain during injection, but it has other disadvantages. You should be know, uh, knowing about these things. And uh, chlorinated uh, anesthetic agents, you should be knowing about what are they and how do they work. Pharmacodynamics of inhaled anesthetic agents. And uh, uh, how does it affect? Opioid analgesics are very commonly asked. You should be able to answer that question. And how it affects, what is the problems of overdosage of opioids? 
what are the side effects of opioids, what is the modes and routes of administration, how the metabolism of opioids takes place. Talking about fentanyl, you should be, it is very commonly used in the field of anesthesia because it's high lipid soluble and its potency, it is almost 100 times more potent than, 100 times more potent than what? Morphine. Isn't it? So you should be able to tell about something about sufentanil, alfentanil, remifentanil. Remifentanil is new, um, unique, rapid onset and offset, lack of accumulation, rapid recovery. Uh, these things, meperidine is nothing but pethidine. Old timers may ask about it. Its clinical use of meperidine has definitely declined presently after the advent of fentanyl. So only opioid consideration. Um, especially uh, when administered intrathecally because of its local anesthetic action along with its mu mediated opioid activity you should be able to talk about it. Buprenorphine, I've been using it very often. Um, I love that drug. <laughs> a very use useful. Uh, it's a semi-synthetic derivative of thebane and an ag agonist and antagonist opioid. It is a partial agonist at the mu receptors and kappa antagonist with high receptor affinity to both. But a weak delta agonist. So that is it. Tramadol may be asked this thing. And as I mentioned, opioid antagonist, naloxone, you should be able to talk about it. Very selective when used in various conditions. It's a non-selective antagonist at all the three opioid receptors. You should be able to tell that. And uh, you should be talking about various NSIs also, uh, like aspirin, diclofenac, uh, diclofenac sodium and all. Really ask, but they may be us. Selective COX-2 inhibitors like celecoxibs and Estaminophen, mechanism of action, pharmacokinetic type estaminophen. These things are commonly known. Neuromuscular blocking agents. Succinyl choline will definitely be asked because it's a depolarizing, only depolarizing neuromuscular blocking agent. Succinyl choline, succamethonium, characteristic of its blockade. What are the problems and how the metabolism takes place? Um, how it's hydrolyzed by plasma cholinesterase, pseudocholinesterase, or Butyryl cholinesterase, very rapidly. How it works and what is atypical plasma cholinesterase? Atypical plasma cholinesterase is generally genetically aberrant enzyme. It lacks the ability to hydrolyze ester bonds and succinylcholine and mucurine. So there will be problems if the patient is having this problem so for using mucurine as well as succinylcholine. So how much is the dose of scholine? And what are the drug interactions? and side effects so that you should be able to answer and confidently <laughs> isn't it and because you are supposed to be knowing those things and uh, <clears throat> reversal agents uh, nobody would ask you uh, neosigmine but sugar medics definitely sugar medics is very important it is a modified cyclodextrin Three-dimensional structure resembles a hollow truncated cone or donut, isn't it? So it produces rapid and effective reversal of both shallow and profound rocaronium induced neuromuscular block. Adverse effect, hypersensitivity, anaphylaxis, anything. Um, and how it works, it can cause um, sugar medics is uh, not recommended with severe kidney dysfunction. You should know that it interferes with hormone contraceptives also. So you should know certain details and what is it affects on coagulation, transient rise in activated partial thromboplastin time, prothrombin time. See more often bradycardia and cardiac arrest with pre-existing cardiac problems with sugar medics. You should know. And uh, rare drug, they may ask about dobutamine, epinephrine. Uh, ephedrine. Ephedrine is a mixed direct and indirect acting sympathomimetic. It is taken up into nerve terminals and displaces norepinephrine from vesicles and nerve terminals. Ain't it? So ephedrine you have been using very often. You should be able to answer to that. And as a rescue vasopressor, it can be used 5 to 15 milligram intravenous boluses 
uh, most advocated for the treatment of hypertension following spinal anesthesia, isn't it? And you may ask about phenylephrine. Phenylephrine is pure alpha-1 agonist that increases arterial and venous tone. Although phenylephrine doses more than 5 microgram per kg per minute can be used, the maximum phenylephrine uh, doses are limited to 1.5 to 2 microgram per kg per minute to avoid excessive vasoconstriction and true tissue ischemia. You have to be very careful. Norepinephrine, they may ask, norepinephrine is recommended as the first choice uh, vasopressor for sepsis in the surviving sepsis campaign, SSC. In the SSC guidelines, the first drug which is used and most effective is norepinephrine. You should be able to tell, isn't it? So, you should be able to tell about that and uh, why, uh, how we use uh, other drugs like, rare drugs like nitroprusside, how it works. The, what it produces, cyanide toxicity, especially in higher doses, more than 2 microgram per kg per minute. And need for, needs close monitoring when you are using nitroprusside because it can cause severe hypertension. So, is, uh, this is that. Thanks for patient listening and have a wonderful day. This is Colonel Pradeep Pindiala signing off for tonight. Wish you a happy weekend. Take care. Bye-bye.